Cohen Schroyer for Infowars.com. I'm joined by Conchita Sarnov. She is the CEO of the Alliance to Rescue Victims of Trafficking, and we are going to discuss some California legislation, Senate Bill number 1322. Well, Conchita, when I first read this bill, when I first saw this legislation and the story, I, I didn't even believe it. Honestly, I did not even believe it. I had to go and read it for myself, and I really still almost don't believe it, but there it is. What was your first reaction when you saw this legislation? Well, I think uh, it was very similar to yours. Um, one was a co complete state of disbelief. Number two, uh, great concern. Um, as you know, I've... Um, been managing a, an organization in D.C., Alliance to Rescue Victims of Trafficking. And we have been attempting for the past two, three years to raise awareness of the issue of human trafficking and to help prevent children uh, from being trafficked and those who are trafficked to help them receive services and support. One of our primary goals, of course, Owen is to open a safe house in D.C., and once that model is established and successful, hopefully open other safe houses across the country. So when I read the legislation, and it was sent to me by, by someone in, in the field of human trafficking, I was quite surprised. Uh, first, because our primary concern, not only my, uh, my our organization, but I guess every NGO's primary concern in the field of human trafficking is to prevent predators from trafficking children. That is, to allow law enforcement and to help law enforcement and work with law enforcement in order to stop predators from trafficking children, selling them for sex on the streets and online. So if you read the bill, which I did, um, it's a rather lengthy bill. And it was signed into effect on September 26, 2016. It's SB 1322. And unfortunately, it has, I believe, unintended consequences. I'm sure that unwittingly, those who attempted and who advocated for the bill, uh, I don't believe were there to hurt the victims, but unfortunately, According to the DA's office, and I cannot uh, reveal who I spoke to at the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office, but the officials who I spoke to said that this law actually does not protect victims. Why? Very simply, because it allows the victim to claim rights when she's on or he is on the street. Boys and girls underage can now claim under SB 1322 that the police who comes forward to try to detain that victim cannot detain them and they're infringing upon their rights. So that is something that we need, I think, if law enforcement and the district attorney's office of Los Angeles is calling this bill a negative bill, something that will hurt victims instead of help victims, I think we need to pay attention to the district attorney's office and to those other law enforcement officials who are claiming the same concerns. And we need to either amend the bill, which you know is a, is a process, it's a long process, so we can't simply just amend the bill within 24 hours. It's going to take at least a year or so. Um, and we've got to overturn this bill. Um, that's the solution. But the primary solution, as all, all of us who work in the field of human trafficking understand, are based on three pillars, prevention, protection, and prosecution. So if a policeman is not allowed to detain a victim while on the street because of SB 1322, he is actually not doing the victim any favors because the victim can be helped through child services once it's detained, not to be prosecuted for a criminal act, because if, if, it, if that child is a minor, then absolutely that child cannot be detained as a prostitute, but it can be detained until that predator goes away or is somehow put away. Under this bill, it makes it much more difficult for that predator to go away.
Well, I'm somebody who loves to pontificate on the philosophy of our law and order. And when I first read this, I say, okay, why would they pass this? And of course, the logic is we're trying to protect the victim, as you said, I would imagine so they don't have a legal record built up or so that they can avoid, you know, stuff like that. Um, just, just all the stuff that comes with a legal record dealing with the police. However, I believe that this is skirting the judicial process because my philosophy of law and order is if there's a situation where, let's say, an underage or a minor is being um, sex trafficked, well, then I put the onus on that judge to see the case and say, you know what, this is a victim here. This person doesn't need a legal record. But now, thanks to this legislation, they've, as you said, opened the door for essentially child prostitution to go on on the streets and taken the the law out of the process here. So now they can just do it. And like you said, they have the right to essentially say, hey, you can't arrest me. I'm allowed to do this. Don't you think that this opens the door for predators to take advantage of it as well? Absolutely. Not only does it does it allow predators to take advantage of this, which is what the DA's office explained to me. And, you know, I am not a lawyer, so I certainly uh, pay attention to and listen to uh, attorneys and district attorneys who uh, who have recommended that this law is not positive and not helpful and not a pre preventive measure uh, in support of victims. Quite the contrary. You know, it sort of reminds me of the law that was passed in Peru about two years ago, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where a child under the age, a 14-year-old child today, uh, can actually uh, be allowed to have sexual relations with an adult, and that adult will not go to jail. Now, you have to ask yourself, why? Well, very simply, from what I was told, uh, in Peru, there were so many government officials and rich predators um, abusing children sexually under the age that they decided to create this new law. So uh, you wonder why in California, you know, uh, a community, a state that is that is quite liberal uh, sexually, and why would they pass this law? Uh, it, it is a question. It is an important question we need to ask ourselves. And at the end of the day, this is a bipartisan issue. This is not about Democrats versus Republicans. Uh, this is not about liberals versus conservatives. This is about laws that we need to have in place that allow law enforcement to prosecute traffickers, protect victims, and prevent these types of crimes from happening to our children. That's what this is about. And that should be everyone's focus. Well, I'm, af I I'm afraid the liberal mindset has really twisted and concocted quite a web here that they're not even gonna be able to get themselves out of. But it's been interesting recently, I've noticed the normalization of pedophilia with publications such as Salon, the New York Times, uh, TV yes. shows on Fox putting children's with gags in their mouth, even on Snapchat, they stood up for a pedophile who said he was a, a professor that was attracted to prepubescent girls, but because he never acted on it, it was okay. And then you mentioned, hey, this happens in California. What's in California? Hollywood. Do you think there might be any connection here? Well, look, I, I have not investigated. As you know, I'm also an investigative reporter, so I, I I don't want to speak out of turn, but I do know that we live in a hypersexual culture. Uh, I have heard many stories, I have read many stories about Hollywood children, so to speak, you know, entertainers, young, uh, underage Hollywood kids, entertainers who have been sexually abused by directors, producers, et cetera, people in the industry. And, you know, that has happened since time immemorial. So um, I would guess, and this is a guesstimate, that given the stories I've read and the information that's out there, uh, yes, it could be a law that would certainly help uh, those predators uh, get away with more than what they've already been able to get away with. Uh, in this country, as you know, when you have money and you have influence, you can get away with a lot. And that was the basis of my book, Trafficking, which was published last year after uh, many, many publishers turned it down. 
Well, Conchita Sarnoff from the Alliance to Rescue Victims of Human Trafficking, thank you so much.